Okay, in this video I'm going to continue on with my tutorials on quantum statistics. This is video number 29 and I'm going to discuss the evaluation of alpha and beta. I'd also like to introduce you to my website universityofphysicstutorials.com. So the previous videos to this are maximizing occupancy, the most probable distribution, density of states, density of states, number density and occupancy. So a quick bit of revision. In the previous videos, in the most previous video, number 28, I showed you, or uh, we calculated the most probable dis uh, distribution, or we maximized the occupancy function. We got n sub s is equal to g sub s e to mass alpha plus beta epsilon, where epsilon is at the energy. We said that n sub s is the number density, or the number of particles per macro box. We said g sub s was the density of states, and that e to the minus alpha plus beta epsilon is the occupancy function. So that's the Maxwell-Boltzmann Maxwell occupancy function because we're dealing with classical particles. So if n sub s is the number density, well then, by uh, the is, is yeah. So this we can rewrite this n sub s equal g sub s e to the minus alpha plus beta epsilon as n sub s equal g sub s times f. Okay, that's generally the way we write it. Now we know that the sum of the number density or the, the sum of all those particles is the total number of particles. And if you multiply that by energy, or the energy of each particle, we get the total energy. Okay? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to assume we can go from a discrete state to a continuum of states. Why? Well, I, probably because the numbers are just so enormous we can do that. But let's assume that we can go from a sum to an integral. That means that the total number now becomes rho, rho is interchanged with g. g is for discrete states rho is for continuous states and we don't use the subscript s because now I'm going to I'm going to give it the density of states in energy space f of v is the occupancy function for energy so it's going to be e to the uh, e to the minus alpha plus beta epsilon and then we have de because we're going to integrate de and uh, in order to get the energy you multiply the exact same here but multiply it by energy so let's go ahead and calculate the um, Let's calculate alpha and beta. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do both of those integrals. And I'm going to do them reasonably quickly. Uh, there are one or two Gaussian integrals which I'm not going to do. Um, I'm sure you've seen them a few times at this stage. So what we saw a moment ago is this. I'm going to, we saw that um, n of e is equal to g of e times f of e. Okay. In the previous video I calculated the density of states in energy space. And we got it as v over 2 pi squared h bar squared square root 2m cubed root epsilon d epsilon okay then we have the occupancy function e to the minus alpha plus beta epsilon okay that is the number density function so we need to integrate n of e de in order to get the total number of particles and we need to integrate e times n of e de to get the total energy. Okay? And we're going to integrate from zero to infinity. Like that. Alright? Now I'm going to do the integral on the left first. And I'm just going to do it reasonably quickly because there's no need to get bogged down in this, I think. Alright? So if I rewrite the equation as follows V over two y squared h bar cubed square root two m cubed. Uh, e to the minus alpha, then the integral root epsilon e to the minus beta epsilon d epsilon. Okay, and this is just a constant which I'm going to ignore. Okay, this will turn out to be a Gaussian integral, but we'll only see it as a Gaussian integral if I make the following substitution x is equal to root epsilon, x squared is equal to epsilon, uh, or x is equal to epsilon to the half. All ways of writing the same thing. That means that dx is equal to one half uh, epsilon to the minus half and then we have d epsilon like that. Okay? So we can rewrite our integral as follows. I'm going to ignore the constant at the front for the moment, just leave them with that placeholder there. And we're going to have twice x squared e to the minus beta x squared dx. Okay? Now, if this is a Gaussian integral, 
I'm not going to do it. I'm sure you can just look these things up. The answer to this particular integral is 1 half pi over beta beta cubed. Sorry, I had to just check that out and that squared it like that. So, what I'm going to do is plug this in here and rearrange for e to the minus alpha. So what we're going to get is that e to the minus alpha is equal to 4 pi n over v, 2 pi squared, h bar cubed, beta over 2, m pi to the 3 over 2. So what I did was I just got the value for beta, plugged it back in, and rearranged for e to the minus alpha, which was up here. Okay, remember this is, is this here. Okay, so now what we have is a function, uh, we have alpha in terms of beta. And what we're going to do in order to calculate alpha and beta is plug it into this particular integral, because we've already used this one, now we're going to use this one. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so once again, I'm going to do it reasonably quickly. There's no need to get bogged down on it. It's just, it's just pretty straightforward mathematics. So v over 2 pi squared h bar cubed square root 2m cubed 4 pi n over v 2 pi squared h bar cubed the integral epsilon root epsilon e to the minus beta epsilon d epsilon all right so we have a load of constants again, which I'm just going to give a place to give them a placeholder. So they're all my constants. So e is just going to be equal to a load of constants. Okay, and it's going to be epsilon to the two thirds, or excuse me, to the three over two, e to the minus beta epsilon d epsilon. Okay, make the same substitution as the last time, where x is equal to square root epsilon, and we're going to get that e is equal to my constants times a factor of 2 integrated 0 to infinity e to the minus beta x squared x to the 4 dx and I'm going to tell you that that particular integral that particular integral turns out to be 3 quarters pi over beta to the fifth power okay finally Put all of those together and just be careful with your algebra. You'll find that the energy is 3 over 2 n times 1 over beta. Now, this is for classical particles. We know that for classical particles, the equipartition theorem says that the energy is equal to 1 half uh, n f k t. Okay, if we compare them both, what we'll find is that, well, say, get rid of the number. Okay, so f is a number of degrees of freedom. So we have 3 over 2 k t. Compare it here. Okay, we have 3 over 2 nkt. This suggests that beta is equal to 1 over kt. And we call this the thermodynamic beta, 1 over kt. Alright, finally, how do we get alpha? We saw a moment ago that alpha is a function of beta. Alright, so, so e to the minus alpha is a function of beta e to the minus alpha is a function of beta. Now, I'm going to tell you that it's, it relates to conservation of particles, and we call it the chemical potential. Specifically, the chemical potential is the amount of energy you add to the system when you add one particle. That's exactly what the chemical potential is. If you want, you can look at my videos on thermodynamics where I actually did a few on the chemical potential. So if we write it this way, that means e to the minus alpha plus beta epsilon becomes e to the minus mu over kt. That's the mu is the chemical potential, by the way, uh, and plus epsilon over kt. Okay, and that's going to be equal to our occupancy function. So we said that a Maxwell Boltzmann occupancy function is equal to 1 over e to the, it's actually e minus mu over kt. Uh, this should be a minus there, by the way. 
Okay, so I don't really want to dwell on it too much. Basically, we can say that beta is a thermodynamic beta, 1 over kT, and that alpha is to do with conservation of particles. We usually call it the chemical potential. It's the amount of energy you add to the system when you add a single particle. For classical particles, uh, for classical particles, we, we, we usually set it to zero. Okay, because there is no change in the number of particles. However, when you're dealing with bosons, um, there is no conservation of particles and you have to have this, this uh